G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Profile video for you. Mobile workbench. On the mobile workbench today we have a HP Procurve 4000M enterprise class network switch. At the time, these were good. Had their quirks in them, but they were really, really good network switches. Currently my network switch has eight cards in it. Each card has eight RJ45 NICs in it, total of 64 NICs, and of course you've got, you can put in another card here, and I've also got 100 megabit fibre channel. So we'll have a quick look at it, unfortunately we can't power this up, uh, as we know I've been having brain fade issues again this week, and I've completely forgotten the password into this. Anyhow, on the front we have our console port. RS232 DB9. We have our system engine fail, so that's when the thing crashes. Self test light. This lights up when it's uh, self testing from boot. We have our mode select, our module statuses, and our fan good and bad light. The cards are removable. I've already undone this one here just to show you the cards. On the back of the unit, not much. Airflow and an IEC plug. We'll take one of the uh, we'll take one of the cards out and I'll show you one of the cards. <sighs> and there it is there. So they're all Broadcom NICs. HP processor for the actual card. And a Bell IC chip, which I presume. I don't know what that chip's for. Some power regulation there. So every card looks like that. Well, you'll uh, just pop it back in. Tight fit. I'll show you the fibre channel cards too. As I said, this is megabit fibre channel. So it is a fairly old switch. But unfortunately... I can't, I can power it up, but I can't get into it because I have forgotten my admin password for it, which is uh, a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm just trying to uh, get in here if I can for you all. Let's screw out a bit more. <clears throat> Tight fit, but they have to be really. So this is the fibre channel card. If we have a look at the fibre channel card, again it's Broadcom. The processor chip for it. And the uh, fibre links, as you can see there. 100 base. So it's a fairly slow fibre channel. You can see there it's got a similar PCI uh, interface bus. And you would simply just push it back in, but obviously it's not going to go in. There we go. What you can do with these also is um, you can tie the modules together. So if you are running, uh, I know this sounds stupid, but we'll, we'll, we'll just do this for an example. Say you have four networks, four individual networks in your business that don't talk to each other. Uh, you might have a test bench network, you might have a domain network, and you might have a, a uh, factory network. Now, the test bench network is, as it says, you know, it's for testing. Then you've got your domain network, and then you've got your factory network. What you can do is you can actually tie two modules together, and that's one 16 NIC network. You can have another one there, and then you might tie these two together and have a separate one here. Or, you may have your primary network as your fibre channel. You tie the fibre channel into this, and then you can tie all these together. So that's what this does. In the uh, management port, which is console-driven, it uh, gives you options for setup. You can actually assign one of these as a management port. Um, now, me being old school, I don't do that because uh, I get it through the terminal. 
when you get one of these, you would uh, turn it on and you would hope that there is no password. Now, as I said, unfortunately, I have um, forgotten the password, so I can't get into it for you. It is, um, whilst being console-based, it's not like a Unix-type interface. It's more of a DOS-like interface into using it. So you have um, numbers and letters to choose from. You can uh, put in commands to tie them all together. Now what we'll try and do is get into the top of it. We'll have a look at the top of it. Which is more of these funny little screws. I may have to get a bigger screwdriver. In fact, I am going to have to get a bigger screwdriver. Hang on, let me go and get a bigger screwdriver. Okay, bigger screwdriver this time. We'll get in and have a look at the top of it. Now you notice the screws don't come all the way out. They only go so far. If you come across one of these switches in good working order, I wouldn't hesitate in recommending them. Um, I find some of HP's older equipment actually quite good. Pre the uh, merger with Compaq. But some of, their, um, some of their equipment is really, really good. Really good. Uh, I've got a nice HP server in there that's never given me much grief. Okay. All right. What we'll do is take the back off it, I think. I don't think the top's going to come off. Oh, no. Let me get the top off it. Ah, I see. The top does come off. Oh dear. Allen keys. Okay, we'll scratch that idea. We'll put it on its uh we'll put it on its um front. We'll take the uh we'll take the back off and see if we can look into it. Unfortunately I haven't got my Allen keys with me. So we'll just take the uh we'll just take the top off or the back out of it. As I said, these days, mega, there is still a, uh, a use for some megabit uh, switch stuff, although with the um, movement to um, gigabit and obviously now 10 gig, I was reading an article where they're saying that fibre is dying. Now, I don't necessarily believe fibre's dying. Um, especially in, in the case of a data center where you need high-speed, you know, file access and that. Um, from a networking point of view, 10 gigabit network is you know, obviously the way it's going to go, and I'm sure in the future it'll end up, you know, you'll have 20 gigabit, 30 gigabit, etc., etc., etc. But um, I guess, you know, gigabit's fine 99.9% .9 of the time. I guess the other thing also that needs to be noted about Gigabit 2 is it's okay in networking, um, but in the case of actual, um, this is weird, this does not want to come out. What a lot of people I deal with seem to get confused about is they think a gigabit modem is going to improve their internet. Now, that's not entirely true. Um, and I often struggle to explain that to people, that if you have a modem with a gigabit uh, interface for, say you've got a four-port modem, or, four, you know... Um, DSL modem with a four port network in it, gigabit is not actually going to improve your internet. You know, if you've only got, like in my case here, an eight megabit download speed, a one gigabit network or one gigabit NIC connected to your computer isn't going to do anything. You're still only going to be able to download at your, you know, whatever your internet speed is. 
and uh, I'm trying to, if you're wondering what I'm trying to do, I want to try and get into this for you and show you, but there we go. As I said, it's all modular. There's the power supply out. Definitely tell it got hot at some stage in its life. I've had this out before. Here's a bit of a bugger to get out. So there's that. There are the uh, three fans to keep the unit cool. And obviously the back plane. Now you'll you'll notice one thing. I only have one PSU. It can take two for redundancy. Now it runs on one. But you'll see there that it, it can run on two. And inside is just a big gum. A big network pane. We'll put that back together. Um, as I was saying, you know, I, I struggle to explain to people that um, a gigabit network is not going to improve your internet in a home environment. Now, in the case of gaming, as uh, I'm now having to learn more and more about gaming and gaming rigs and that, which is, let's face it, getting well outside my comfort zone, as we know. Um, in the case... I'll screw that in later. I want to try and show you the back plane for this, if we can. Uh, in the case of gaming, like a LAN party and that, probably Gigabit's the best to go, because you can... Um, you got far better network connectivity between you and, and the rest of your... Uh, land party members but if your internet is not much chop well gigabit's not really going to offer you much anyway getting back i got off on a bit of a tangent there i know getting back to this network switch as i said back in the days when hp's stuff was really good and i mean exceptionally good this switch, actually, I know where this came from. Um, I think I bought this. I bought it on an online auction, and I believe it came from a uh, television station here in Australia. It was a really good unit, if I can get it to come out again. And tell it, they're made to go in tight, but the expandability of this was second to none. I mean, you could really do a lot with it. Although, I believe there was no gigabit availability for it that was a different model so as you can see there it looks like it's a um, PCI bus it's not very far from it okay let me get the torch and we'll have a look inside at the uh, at the back plane so you can see there the back plane for the whole switch is just a PCI bus or the plugs of PCI and it, they just plug into they plug into that port and as I said in the management you can tie them all together or you can separate them you can have eight individual networks there's there it is there we'll zoom in and have a look so as I said it looks like a PCI plug but I think for memory I got one of these cards and tried to plug it in and, and it didn't like it all the cards have this HP 1821-4791 chip on it, made in the Philippines. And each of these Broadcom chips handles four NICs. And you've got the, uh, as I said there, you've got the two Bell chips on. I can't remember what they're for. We have some... Uh, down Mr. Squiggle. Camera will focus. Camera doesn't want to focus today. But anyway, that is a very big Broadcom switch. Uh, network switch. Anyway, a bit, bit of a quick profile that one. Very tight to get back in. Anyway, there it is there. Profile the HP Pro Curve. Um, if you find one of these, I get it, especially if you're not too worried about having a uh, megabit switch. And uh, you know, as I say, megabit's still all right, 
but if you're into bulk file transfers and stuff like that, then megabit's not really going to be what you want. Um, TV station where I help out, we have a combination of megabit and gigabit networking. The, um, the megabit stuff runs non-mission critical uh, equipment, so um, vision switching and that where you only need it megabit because the interface on whatever you're using is megabit. But production and play out is on gigabit. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to put a link to the station's website in this video for you to go and have a look at it. And you can watch videos on it. And as I said in one of the teardowns, I will have a full uh, IT profile of the TV station coming up once I can get there, I guess. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Quick profile on this. Um, hopefully... The next time I get around to working with this switch, we can power it up and I'll show you how all this works. The other thing too, also with this um, fibre, as I said, it's only 100 megabit fibre, but it's 100 TXRX for memory. So it's 100 megabit transmit and 100 megabit receive. Whereas these are 10100, obviously. As you can see there, 10100. And this is full 100. So, technically speaking, it's actually quicker than this, which would be good because if you're in for file transfers between, say, your, your uh, workstation or your, um, your domain controllers plugged into this, and say your NAS or SANS plugged into this, then file transfer is not a problem. You can use the rest of the workstations on something like this. Not necessarily do you have to have fibre, you could probably get all fibre for this and that will give you 100 megabit TXRX, which would be great. That's still pretty good, but as I said, the tendency now to go from, you know, we've got 1 gig, 10 gigs becoming the standard now, and I'm sure down the track we're going to end up with, you know, probably won't be long before we've got like 50 gigabit and 100 gigabit network cards. Um, but as I was saying, the article about uh, is Fibre Channel dead? Personally to me, I don't think it is because data centres use Fibre Channel between the servers, you know, for file storage because, you know, you, you're still able, I think in some cases, Fibre Channel's running at 130 gigabit in some cases. Uh, maybe under the old FF, uh, FDDI protocol or something like that. I think I read an article not long ago saying that fiber channel they were still getting fiber channel up around the well the norms about 16 gigabit to 30 gigabit but i did read an article not long ago to say that some fiber uh systems out there are still running at 130 gigabit but that's over long distances that's not just from say you switch to your file server or your nas drive all right, thank you very much for watching. Apologies if we can't power it up and get in and have a look at it, but once I remember the password, we might get around to having a look inside this. All right, thanks very much for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe.